<clears throat> Can you be quiet? Can you please be quiet? Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yeah. Wow. Cheers. It's Trauma Free Friday on Saturday night. <laughs> we're going to see. Yeah, we're going to see if this works. Because right now, I have decent signal. Of course, we don't know if it'll last. <sighs> but we're going to give it a shot. And as you can tell, I have my friend is down here. And if he can't keep his mouth shut, I'll have to put him behind door number one. His friend is over laying in a big um, bucket full of newspapers and very happy and contented. This thing, <laughs> on the other hand, <laughs> is a whole different, it's a whole different kettle of fish, aren't you? Because you're just noisy. So anyway. <clears throat> Here's the deal. My internet speed is not stable, apparently. I won't say apparently, it's not. Uh, so my internet service provider, Mediacom, is uh, having issues. Now, I don't know what their issues are, but they uh, are assuring me that they're working on it. <laughs> okay. Hey, Mindy. <laughs> They're working on it. Anyway, so welcome to Drama Free Friday on Saturday night. My, uh, my, what you have to have in order to stream is you have to have good upload speed. And my upload speed should be around, this is just trivia, but my upload speed should be between 10 and 15 megabits per second. And mine is running from anywhere from 0.3 or or zero, uh, right now it's really good. So that's why I thought, we'll try it. See what happens. <laughs> and it all depends on whether he will be quiet, lay down and be quiet as to whether he gets to stay here. Right now he's not cooperating so much. So anyway, we're just gonna dispense with all the uh, stuff that I do ahead, usually do before Drama Free Friday happens. So I'm just going to kind of ignore all that and just jump right into what I was going to do. So anyway, if anybody is here, I see Mindy's here. If anybody else is here and you'd like to jump in and chat with me, that would be great. Just um, uh, it, people aren't expecting me to be on at this time, so there may not be very many people who are here, which is fine. <laughs> yeah, he does. He just, he hangs on my every word, Mindy. He actually does. He just sits there and he just he hangs on everything I say because he thinks that I'm going to scoot my chair back and let him get on my lap. Probably what you'll see him do is patting my arm and he's now got his foot on the table and he likes to pat my arm and if that doesn't get my attention, he crawls up my shoulder and he pats my shoulder. If that doesn't work, then he crawls up a little higher and he pats my face. Darcy! <laughs> hey, Darcy! I don't get to see you, so I'm so glad you're here. Anyway, so let's not... Um, hi, Carol. Uh, let's try not to... Um, <laughs> this is a... It's a virtual zoo around here tonight, people. It's a virtual zoo. It's not virtual. It's the real deal. And the other one... I don't know if you can see him. He's walking around down here. <sighs> hey, Jennifer. <laughs> what am I doing? Darcy, I'm going to um, I'm gonna make some crazy things based out of Carla Sondheim's book. Some silly animal cards, I think. That's what I'm going to try and do. So let's see what happens, shall we? All right. Everything seems to be going okay. <laughs> seems to be doing it going okay. Don't jinx me. <laughs> okay. So. So this is what I was trying to talk about on Friday. So this is the drawing lab by for mixed media artists by Carla Sondheim. 
And so I'm not going to go. Friday when I was trying to stream and couldn't, I was showing you some of the stuff I'd done in this book. Or some of, not done in the book, but, you know, exercises from the book and so forth. And so I thought, you know, I would uh, dispense with all that. Let's see if I can find the chapter. This is one of the things that she has you do, which is drawing cats, uh, draw cats in bed. So essentially, it's just do a whole bunch of um, cats, you know, just off the cuff, off the top of your head, right? So I'll show you some of my cats. Oh, I just got it cut, Darcy. Yeah, I just got it cut. And I've been walking. I went walking today for like, I think we walked about three and a half miles today. And so um, <laughs> it was blowing. It was blowing. It was literally blowing the hair off my head. It was that windy. So, yeah. So, it was really windy. And uh, so, I've got that I got that windblown look on top of everything else. Hey, Jeannie. <laughs> okay. So, here are some of, you know, the, the thing about cats in bed. <clears throat> so, here are some of my cats. So, I'll show them to you and then we'll... Let me show you the rest of them. The ones that were really from the cats in bed are things like this. So these were my quick, you know, just draw cats and just see, you know, it's that quick sketch kind of thing. And some of them I liked and some of them I didn't like and some of them are, well, they're all goofy. They're all goofy, that's for sure. So, just to give you an idea of some of them. And so, what she has suggested, as I recall, it's been a while since I actually read the chapter. But what she suggested was to find the ones that you liked and then to... <clears throat> that's a fat little thing, isn't it? With his tail growing out of his leg. That's kind of weird. <clears throat> Well, that, it's a really good question. Darcy wants to know, were the cats in bed or were you in bed? Well, <coughs> I think that it was you. <laughs> I think it was you. Um, I just got my cards out. I've, this has been several years ago since I did these. I just got the, cat, the cards out and just started, you know, drawing as many different versions of cats as I could. And some of them I liked, and some of them I didn't like, obviously. You know, that's the way it goes. <clears throat> so, but once you get going, it's, it's really pretty fun what you end up doing. Well, I saw that, that Paula wasn't streaming tonight, and I thought, you know, I'll just see if it'll work, and it'll give people something that they can can do if they want to come over here and hang out and that way I can also get a recording maybe so I can get something up for tomorrow because tomorrow is when I usually release my recording from Friday okay so you get the idea right oh, I'm almost done with them almost done with the cats okay and that's the end of the cats so then what I did was I took the ones that I liked the best and I kind of refined the drawings a little bit. So these are the ones that I liked the most out of the cats. So I have this one. Maybe I'll do them without having them stacked up. And this one. I have one more. I took three of each. Oh, let's see. And this one. Okay. So these were the three drawings that I ended up deciding that I liked the most. This one, and this one, and this one. And then I did the same thing with dogs. So these are my dog 
my dog drawings, quick little dog sketches done with pen or this was a Sharpie. Is the sound cutting out? I don't know. Somebody will have to let me know. Oh, Mindy says it sounds okay for her. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> that's a good thing. It looks here like everything is okay. On my end, it looks okay, but who knows? It has a long way to go, Darcy. It has a long way to go to get to you. So you can see that you just draw a bunch of silly looking dogs. And all of mine have floppy ears pretty much. Uh, I don't know why. Probably because I live with a golden retriever. And when I did these, that was all I had, I think, were golden retrievers. I don't think I had Muppet, whose ears are, well, Muppet's ears are unique. <laughs> Darcy's in far, far away land. Okay, so these are the dogs. This was from Lab 6 in the book. I, that's what I wrote there. Couldn't prove it by me now. Anyway, so those are my dogs and my cats. So I took the dogs that I liked the best, and these were the dogs that I liked the most. And so again, I kind of refined the drawings a little bit to make them more of, uh, you know, like illustrations. Okay, so those are the three that I like. So I chose three dogs and three cats. And then I decided that I was going to, I, okay, this is a real backwards way to do this, but this is how I did it. I had these envelopes that will accommodate a five by seven card. And I didn't have cards, I just had envelopes. So I took a piece of cardstock, which is eight and a half by 11, folded it in half to see that in fact it would fit in this envelope that I have. So I have a, a bunch of these envelopes so I thought okay I'm gonna make cards to go in these. That's my thought. So then I cut a black piece of cardstock and then I cut a white piece of cardstock. Okay, so this is my thought that this would be the card. Okay. So I went this went about this in a very backwards sort of way of doing it because I started with the envelope. <laughs> you lost me for a second. Well, it looks here like my stream is doing okay. So we're gonna keep going and see what happens. All right, so that's kind of where, how I approached this. So I knew that this was the size I needed um, my white cardstock pieces to be. So if you're interested in that, this is a five and this is an eight, five by eight. So what size are these envelopes? Let's look at these envelopes. These envelopes are five and three quarters by eight and three quarters. So that's actually the size of the envelope. Okay, so that that just gives you an idea of kind of my backwards way of approaching this. Does that make any sense to you? <laughs> All right. Then I took my drawings, which this drawing, for example, on this piece, this big piece of white cardstock is too small. So I took it to my printer. All right, let me move this stuff that you're sitting, you're tromping on. Yeah. So I took this little drawing that I did from the sketches that I did, and I enlarged it, you know, enough that... I liked how it was going to fit on the card. And I know that you can't see this very well, but that I'm just giving you an idea of the process that I used. Okay, so I took all of my little pieces and I enlarged them, my little drawings, and I enlarged them just on my copy machine, or my uh, printer that has a copy scan function. 
and I just enlarged them so that they fit on the cards the way that I wanted them to fit on the cards. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Like this is like having children in the studio. <laughs> this is like having your children. You should not have your children in the studio. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Okay. So what I took here is I took Strathmore tracing paper. It can be any kind of tracing paper. And so I took the tracing paper and I laid a piece of tracing paper over these um, <clears throat> this shows that I'm online so I don't know what's going on okay mine shows that I'm online that I'm not having any, pro any problem so I don't know I'm gonna keep going <clears throat> So I took the piece of tracing paper laid it on top of my drawing like this and then with a pencil I drew the lines. I just drew around the lines on my tracing paper. So that's how I got my tracing. So far so good. Thank you, Klausman. You can kind of keep me informed as to how things are working, if you would. <clears throat> Couple of them. Couple of pieces of painter's tape. And then you want to use a piece of graphite paper is what I use. Okay, so this is a graphite paper transfer paper and you want to make sure that you're using the correct side of it so I just scratch it and if the mark is coming off on the paper then I know that's the right way so I just lift up my tracing which is taped down slide it under like so <clears throat> and then use a stylus and just go over and I, I don't go very hard. I do this rather lightly so that what it does is it transfer the markings. It will transfer the markings onto the card below. And by using a stylus, um, the stylus is not putting any more, any additional marks on the, the card. And so by not having additional marks on it, you never lose your lines. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, keep going. You realize that here it's nine, it's almost 10 o'clock at night here, so my brain might or might not make sense. It's possible. It's possible it might not. So I'm just going over all the lines and kitty, this kitty has a tail. Now you can't push real hard or you will tear through the tracing paper which I have in a couple spots already. Because the stylus, they come in different points, but I'm using, this is the Martha Stewart stylus from her set of three styluses, and this is the one that is the pointiest one, because it gives me the skinniest line. Okay. Perfect sense. Thank you. <laughs> So before you just rip it off the card, just take this and I just hang on to it, even though it's taped down, and then I lift up my tracing paper and my graphite paper and I peek under, and I know, I honestly know that you can't see this, but um, I just check to see if it's all there. So that, once I know it's all there, then I can take the graphite paper and take it out. <coughs> 
and then you can remove the the uh, painters tape and you do have to do this a little carefully because painters tape even though it removes fairly well can rip the paper if you're not careful and so I've got the um, And if the whining Siamese really gets on your nerves, tell me and I will put him away in the other room behind door number one and I will close the door. So that's what I did to prepare all of my little, um, my little cards here. Obviously, we're not doing all these tonight. <clears throat> Now, back when I was playing around with these, when I was working through Carla's book, I did, I traced several of them on, on a paper. This is just copy paper, so I just traced some of them on here, and then I just played with them. I don't know if this was, I, this was probably part of the assignment in one of the labs in her book, but I honestly don't remember. And so you can, if you remember, these are some of the dogs that I drew. And so this one I just filled, I filled each one of them with different patterns. So this is poor Dolly. She's got the monkey pox and, you know, ha, ha, ha. It's not chicken pox. It's monkey pox. <clears throat> this one is um, Jack, Jack's got the blues. That's this one. This one is uh, Daisy. Is ready for the dog show and this is Fifi's bad hair day <laughs> so okay yes here he's over here touching my arm so then I also use some of those pencils I don't have them over here but they're pencils that have multicolored leads in them and so I just did some different patterning and just did different little you know ways of filling them in and just just playing with them <laughs> thanks Darcy um, this one these are using different crayons so these are all crayons probably crayons probably just Crayola crayons again uh, playing around with pattern and color and this is another set. This was done using those multicolored pencils also, you know, just twisting them and turning them to see if I could kind of control the colors because they're the ones that have like four different leads in one, you know, in the one pencil. And then I don't know, I think this was in the book too, but I just, I've forgotten and I didn't review carefully enough, but you know, we're just using that book as inspiration. I do, I do love the book and I do recommend it, by the way. Um, and these I call Zen Doggles. And so this is kind of what we're going to be playing around with in this stream. So that's what I've got going on here and playing with them. And I don't, I decided I didn't care for them done with the color. This is colored pencil. Didn't care for that as much as I do just the black and white. So I thought we'd just kind of play with that. Okay. Okay. So that gets you caught up to how I got where I got. On, um, on Friday, I showed you a bunch of the quick sketches. And of course, that's not even available, but... <clears throat> I have a whole pile. Can you see that? It's a whole pile of cardstock and all kinds of stuff. And some little paintings that I did. These were all um, poses of a cat that used to be here. She's passed away now. She was my mom's cat. And this her name was Honey, and so I did her in different in the primary colors, so I called them primary cats. So I've got a whole entire <clears throat> tassel of just looking to see what all I've got in here this is a whole passel of <coughs> exercises from the book but I thought it would just be fun to just play around with one exercise and see if we can make some cards sound like a plan 
Hello, wake up, computer. Nobody panic if you see a black screen. That was my computer going to sleep for a second. Trying to go to sleep. But I told it to wake up. <clears throat> so, does anybody have any questions about the process that I was just kind of going through? See if I can keep my throat cooperating with me here. All right. If you have questions, put them in caps. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this to all of them, and then, then we'll decide which ones we want to play around with. So I'm just going to use a big, fat Sharpie. This is the fine point, but the fine point is pretty fat. And I'm going to go over my lines. So then you'll be able to see the cats and dogs. So I'm just going to go over all of my graphite lines. Now the thing about graphite is it doesn't erase very well. You can work at it a little bit. You can get rid of some of it, but it doesn't erase like, you know, like pencil does. <coughs> so what you want to do when you're doing this kind of stuff is just play with it. And if you mess up your lines, you know, like I just did, just thicken them up a little bit. <clears throat> you love the Zen doggles? Yeah, I did too. I, you know, the funny thing is I did those so long ago I forgot all about them. Till I was digging through my stack of magazines looking for some inspiration the other day. And I found those and I thought, oh, I need to do something with this. And I started looking through them the other night and I'm like, I forgot I did all these. Okay, so there's one. Okay. So now we'll do a dog. So today I went outside, I had a couple of orders of rubber stamps, my rubber stamp faces that I needed to put in the mailbox. And I go outside and open the mailbox, and I'd forgotten to get the mail from yesterday, which is typical. <coughs> and pulled out the mail from yesterday. And do you know that the mail was full of ants? I'm like, you have got to be joking. So I told Claus Man, I said, the mailbox is filled with ants. And so he went out later to investigate. And do you know that the ants had built a nest in our mailbox, complete with eggs and everything? I guess they thought it was a good place to build a nest. I don't know. But anyway, it was kind of disgusting. All right, so while I'm here, I'm going to fill these doggles. I'm going to fill in these little parts that I want. And I'll do the same thing with the cat. But that was just downright creepy to pull out your mail and it's covered in ants. I'm like, ugh. Yeah. <coughs> I'd never heard of it before either. <coughs> okay, so we'll do this one. So I am trying to um, go over the lines as mu much as possible. <laughs> At the same time, I'm trying to be kind of loose with the whole thing. So it doesn't feel real stilted. And 
And right here I completely missed the line. I know you can't see that, but I'm going to have to use the eraser because I completely missed the line entirely. So we'll see if I can get that to that line to erase here in a minute. Chance is beside me on the chair taking a bath. He's having a He's having quite a bath. So I apologize for the you probably can't see him now. He's just washing his foot and carrying on. Usually about this time of night, he and Charlie take baths at the same time. It's really funny because you see him washing, you know, if one of them's washing the hind leg, the other one's washing the hind leg. It's pretty funny. <coughs> okay, so there's another dog. I'm going to set that one to the side because it needs a little erasing. So let's do this one. Yeah, Claus Man worked on the mailbox. I really hated not getting to stream on Friday. First of all, it's Drama Free Friday, and I look forward to that. Um, I mean, I really, really look forward to it. <laughs> And second of all, I was all ready. <coughs> I mean, I was all ready to stream. And it's like, ugh. So then we spent like, I don't know, probably a good hour on the phone with the internet provider. <coughs> and then after that, I was on the phone with my son for a very long time. So that's part of why I'm coughing and carrying on. Talked a long time yesterday. And for whatever reason, that seems to be harder on my voice than it used to be. Used to stay up forever talking, you know? Okay. This one's probably dry enough. I'm going to see if I can erase the pencil line here before I go on and forget about it. <clears throat> Not pencil line, but the graphite lines. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay, so on to another cat. Is this just like the other one I did? No. <clears throat> So anyway, I apologize for all the throat clearing that you're going to have to endure. It's just the how of it. It's just the how of it. Forgot to make my throat coat tea tonight. I'm drinking chai tea. So what have you guys been doing today? Anybody been doing anything creative? I know Darcy has, but she probably is gone. <laughs> Four o'clock. Good grief, Darcy. You are die hard, girl. You are die hard. Hope you sleep well. 4 a.m. I was up till 4 a.m. one night working on something with my son. We were trying to straighten out some computer issue. I'm here to tell you, by the time that was over with, I couldn't see straight. <laughs> and then by the time I got in bed, I was wide awake. Because I got my second wind, and it's like, oh, I need to go to sleep, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> Well, 
Okay, so there's that one. Mindy made two cards using the Prima Doll stamps. Oh, that sounds fun. I don't have any of those stamps. This one kind of looks like a wild cat of some kind. It's probably the set, the way I have the ears set on the head. Or, <coughs> or it looks a little Siamese-ish. I wonder how that could have happened. <laughs> it's like when you draw faces, you draw your own face. Because I live with Siamese cats now, I guess I probably draw their faces unconsciously when I draw, huh? I don't know why I put this nose thing in here, but this stripey thing, but I like it, so. So I put it in there. I find doing these little silly cat and dogs, cats and dogs, I find them kind of relaxing and fun to do. You did one and a quarter, <laughs> Jeannie did one and a quarter journal pages. <laughs> one and a quarter. Well, that's one and a quarter more than I did today, Jeannie. That's for sure. I don't know if you can see Chance over here, but he is... When I'm talking, he thinks I'm talking to him, I guess. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people. <clears throat> Okay, <coughs> I have this one also, which is a copy, another like the one I just did a minute ago, but I'm going to go ahead and put the lines in. <clears throat> so the cats disappeared today. Nobody could find him. I'm like, they have to be here somewhere. Well, they were in this big bucket. They take turns rotating their the places where they lay down, you know. And sometimes I forget about all their spots that they've found. And they have this bucket. It's a bucket that I collect newspapers. <coughs> and so they had just made a bed in the newspapers and they do that periodically and it's a <coughs> it's a plastic bucket and so they just you know nestle down in that plastic bucket and uh, it's a great soft place I guess but boy it's it's not big enough for these two big fat cats but somehow they make it work <laughs> Somehow they make it work. So anyway, we found them. They were they were not lost. They were not lost. So Jeannie, what were your journal pages about today? So you can see that even if you um do two of the same. They're still, even though they look quite a bit alike, they're still a little different from each other. So even though I use the same drawing and the same tracing, 
in the same size. They still have their own personality. <laughs> Jennifer says he rolled his eyes when I said fat. Did he? Did you roll your eyes at me? You know better than that. Who feeds you? Hmm? Yeah, I know. I feed you. Don't roll your eyes at me. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. <coughs> so having done that, I'm going to use a pencil and I'm going to kind of divide, I'm going to take one of these cats, we'll just start with this one. You're just playing around. Cool. That's great, Jeannie. So I'm going to use this and I'm just going to kind of make some, um, uh, it's kind of like when you zentangle a, um, a tile. Now I'm not a zentangle person, so we're going to call it patterning because I'm not a certified zentangler, but I like the patterns and so forth. And so uh, when you do, when you are knowledgeable and you are a certified zentangler, they you work with tiles and you draw the string and you divide it up and stuff like that. I act like I know what I'm talking about and I really don't. Um, so I'm just going to divide this face into some sections and I'm going to do it with my pencil just... just to arbitrarily give me some divisions. <clears throat> so that's going to just give me some divisions and then to further um, break those up. I'm going to switch to, this is an ultra fine point Sharpie and I'm going to, if I can get the Sharpie to mark. Um, go over my pencil lines. And then maybe we'll um, at least get one division in the tail. Now, I do know that in Carla's book, I'll see if I can find this spot in here where she did do some patterning within one of her dogs, her dog designs. I'll see if I can find it. And I've taken a cup, one class from Carla. It was the um, 101 Faces, which I thought was an excellent class. I really enjoyed that. And she also was a teacher on Lifebook a couple of years ago. And I did all the exercises that she taught, and I really enjoyed doing that <clears throat> as well. So if you're looking for somebody to take a class from that is different, not the same old, same old, um, I would highly recommend Carla's classes. Okay, where is her dog? Here. <clears throat> okay, so this is not exactly the same kind of thing, but this is all patterning. And so this is kind of loosely what I'm kind of working on. So I think that's really cute. Let me see if I can give you a closer look at it. So this is what I'm talking about. So this was her little quick sketch and then this was what she did with it. Isn't that cute? 
with all the little different patterns in it. So it's, you know, it's sort of, it's similar. It has some similarities to Zentangle patterns, but, you know, it's not the same as. So anyway. Okay, so back to all of the noise that you're hearing coming out of the whining cat is that he's upset with the dog. The dog is up here and she's wanting to go get a drink in the bathroom. The bathroom door is closed and um, Chance doesn't want her anywhere around. So he's now whining at her. So what I have, when I'm going to do something like that and fill it with patterning, I have a book that I have been making for quite a while. It's a book that I actually created using the composition notebook covers. And um, I literally cut them off or ripped them off the composition book, cut them down to the size that I wanted. So I maintained the configuration of the outside edge so it still has the rounded um, corners and stuff so I just cut it off from the binding edge and I did the same thing with the back cover and then I uh, just filled it with all different kinds of papers and card stocks and tags and whatever you know whatever I could think of and envelopes and stuff like that and bound it with the cinch so it's different, you know, the papers are different widths and different lengths. And so what I've been using it for is to kind of do some Zen tangling kinds of patterns. And so when I get, when I start doing something with uh, patterning, I often get this back out and then, you know, then I start looking through it and seeing if I can remember how to do the patterns. Because... The disadvantage to me about doing something like this, I love seeing the designs, but I can't always remember how I made them. <laughs> uh, and here's where I was practicing some of them. And once in a while you'll see like this where I just scribble it out because it was a total fail. <laughs> Hi, Carla. We're trying again, Carla. We're trying again. So far, so good. So, you know, I practiced some of the patterns and here, you know, I've written like wrong and correct, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, just so you can kind of see what I do, you know, to practice and to play. And once in a while, I'll do the step outs. This is the best way for me to do it, to do the step outs, because then I can actually remember what it was, you know, what I was supposed to do. I tend to use very simple patterns when I'm doing things like filling things in on this cat. I will use, you'll see that I'll use very simple patterns. I won't do um, many of the complicated patterns at all. But anyway, you kind of get the idea. Jennifer says she loves uh, Zentangle, but she struggles with it. I mean, it. You would think it would be really simple, right? <laughs> It, it is challenging. There is an art. It's a real art form. So my, uh, my granddaughter and I, one of the things that we want to do one day is go to the Certified Zentangle workshops. That's on our bucket list to do together at some point. So anyway, I'm just giving you an idea of what I have in here. And this in here, let's see, this is a plastic... You know, it's open at the bottom and the side. Now tell me, why did I not put this the other way around so that it was open at the top? I, no idea. So probably what I'll do is at some point put something in here that I want to keep. I'll put it in there and then I'll tape it, tape it shut. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder about myself. Anyway. Okay, but it's kind of fun to do some of these on the, the craft cardstock and so forth, you know. So anyway, it's got lots of room, lots of room. Um, what else? And then I have another one. And this is in the mixed media, the Strathmore mixed media. Let me get it here so you can actually see it. Um, so this is in the Strathmore mixed media, the small notebook. And on this one, I'm doing more, I was doing more of the step outs. So, 
So, you know, step one, two, three, and so forth. And that that really helps me because when I look at this, you know, it's hard for me, for whatever reason, it's hard for me to dissect this. And I don't do it often enough to have them, to have the patterns fresh in my mind. Um, and then what I do is, you know, when I'm working on them, then I you know, I'll date them. So this was 10, 18 of 14. And then I try to put the names on them so that I can remember what pattern they are because often they don't make, after I know what the, the name is, like this is seedlings and this is swag. I mean, it makes perfect sense, but like this is called woods, which didn't make any sense to me at all. Um, and right here I have the word wrong <laughs> to show me that I didn't do it correctly. But anyway, so the step outs make much more sense to me. And so this book, that's what this is all about, is doing everything in the step by step so I can remember how the things get, how they come to be, you know, how the patterns are formed. Because as I said, for me, they're just not that simple. This one I absolutely love. This is one of the simplest patterns. I'm going to show this to you up close. I'm going to really zoom in on this. This one right here. I just love that. It's called cheesecloth. And if you know what cheesecloth is, it really looks like it. Is that not the coolest pattern? And talk about easy. That is, because you see the step outs right here. You know, it's just wiggly, you know, kind of subtly wiggly lines very close together. I love that. And then I also really like this one, which was called Wavelength. I really like that too. So, yeah, you can get some really, really nice patterns that way. <coughs> No one wants to talk to you right now. He's over here just purring up a storm. <clears throat> so this just gives you some ideas of some of the different ones that I did. And sometimes I write, it's an okay pattern. I write, not fond of this one. You know, I just make little notes to myself. It is hard to make straight lines. It is. But that wiggly one, you know, we're all over that one. Yeah, some of them don't make sense to me, the names, but some of them make perfect sense. Anyway, that's as far as I got. So, um, anyway, just to give you an idea, you know, it might be something you might try. So I'm going to have those here available. Chance is sitting on my other one. Get off, get off, get off. Sitting on my other book. So I'm going to have those here beside me as I'm looking at what I want to do for the patterns for this. And I also have the patterns that I used on these dogs, okay? And one thing that helps on these dogs that I found, if you're filling something in like this, I find it that I like it better if there's a combination of the dark black patterns like this and the kind of more open patterns. You know, I just think it... It's, I like it better. So anyway, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to take me out of the picture and just kind of work on this. And so I have an assortment of black pins, and you never know which ones are going to work. So, so we'll just get out more of them, and we'll see what works and what doesn't work. Okay. So I have this one, and some of these are sepia, so I will not be using those. I have a little pouch. <coughs> I have a little pouch that is um, my little pouch of Zentangle stuff. And I have some pit pins. This is my special set of pit pins. This is the newest set I have, so I try to keep those together um, in my Zentangle stuff so I don't wreck them with my other stuff. 
and so we'll see what we can come up with. All right. So let's see what we can do. All right. So I'm just going to make some, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And I'm sorry that I can't do it this way, but that's just too awkward for my hands. So you guys are going to have to turn your heads. And... Uh, we may make up our own patterns as we go along here. One of the things that's hard to do when you do this stuff, by the way, is to talk. <laughs> for me, anyway. It's hard for me to talk and um, do them at the same time. So, there you go. Alright, so I'm going to go every other square. And I'm going to put a dot in. And this is where you can get yourself very confused. Maybe, let's see, this one should... Mm -mm, I think this one should have one. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. And then in the alternate ones, I'm going to put a big, bigger circle of black. And sometimes I go back and go, yeah, it looks a little goofy, so I'll just, you know, make it a little different. And then sometimes you end up building your own brand new pattern that isn't even it, like the one that you were using for inspiration. <laughs> okay. So there's that one. Um... And I try to keep a piece of scratch paper handy so that I can get the pins going. So we'll do a little bit of that cheesecloth pattern in here just to do it. So this kind of stuff I like to do actually when I'm sitting in front of the television because it helps me stay awake because um, sometimes if I don't, if I'm not doing something when I'm watching television, I go to sleep. You know what I mean? <laughs> when the body stops, when the body stops, sometimes it just crashes out. Okay, so are you guys doing okay? Hopefully you're doing... Uh, Hopefully you're playing along with me or or just chilling out. So these are not all necessarily going to be Zentangle patterns. These could be a combo platter of most anything. Do any of you guys watch the Decora Eagles? They're the bald eagles that have a nest that are... Uh, their eggs are just now hatching. 
and it's always fascinating, I think, to to see. Last year we saw saw some of them. <clears throat> okay, hang on just a minute. I'm gonna test my chat. Don't know if my chat has stopped or what. Apparently so. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. I see it moving now. <coughs> Which for some reason I don't some reason I can't chat. There we go. Okay. Jennifer watched them last year. Yeah, they're really something. Yeah, they're on Ustream. You get involved watching me, Carla? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Okay, so what are we going to do on this? Um, so I've just made a grid. Now, one of the things that I find that's helpful, I should do this and talk to you. Whoops, sorry, that was a mistake on my part. I didn't mean to put a five in there. Pay no attention to the five in the chat. <laughs> my face looks like it is beet red. That would be because I'm hot at the moment. <laughs> it's hot in the studio. Um, when I'm doing things like this that are on a grid, um, I will come in here and I'll put a dot. If I'm going to color in a square, I'll come in first of all and put dots in the ones I'm going to color in. Sometimes that helps me not to, uh, make a mistake. Not always, not to always fail safe, but you know, sometimes it helps. So, okay, here we go. Uh, Barb, do you ever use the Sharpie pen or don't you like them? I do use the Sharpie pen, actually. I have them here. I forgot to get them out. Um, yeah, those are, they're good pens. Absolutely. I forgot to get mine out, but I appreciate you mentioning it because now I will. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a dot in the squares that I'm going to color in. Doesn't have to be a dot, it could be an X. Yeah, I should get those Sharpie pens out. Uh, you know, the felt tip pens of any kind, whether it's pit pens or Sharpie pens or uh, Micron pens, all have Every pen has its shortcomings, in my opinion. Like the Posca pens or the the um, Sharpie paint pens, poster paint pens. I love those. But if you run across a, a surface that's not completely flat and smooth, they spit. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so you can get splatters when you didn't even mean to get splatters. The uh, felt tip pens, if you're heavy handed, you can mess those up real quick you know so it's uh every pin and ballpoint pins you can smear those they all have their their strengths and their weaknesses so you have to have them all right because you never know what you're going to need good night Jeannie it's great to see you. Hope you have a good sleep. Okay. And the thing about doing this stuff is that if you get it, um, if you make a quote unquote mistake, 
you just make an adjustment, you know, you just make an adjustment, and make a new pattern. You got to pretend like you did, did it and you meant to do it. It's probably just as well that I did not do this on regular stream. People would have been bored out of their minds. <laughs> now the good part of this too, after you do some of these like this, when they're in black and white, these will copy really well. And so, I see just like that, I went too far into this other square. So it's like, oh well. That happens. These will copy really well and so you can copy them and um, print them off on cardstock. If you have a printer that will allow you to do that with cardstock, you can print them off and then you can, you know, make your artwork stretch. So you've already done the work once and then you can use it and print it again and again to make additional cards. And I do that frequently. I'll do that with color. Uh, the color copies as well. Okay, so we have that. Um, so over here on this one, I'm going to do some flower patterns. So this is not necessarily a um, a prescribed tangle pattern that I know of. If it is, it's purely an accident that I'm doing it. And then, um, just to make it, you know, let's put in a few more petals here and there, just to make it a little bit more interesting, um, I think I'll color the flower centers in. And we'll call that good. Okay, so um, on this kitty nose, I'm just going to do a series of lines kind of close together. Curved. I just said how well it's going. <laughs> I just said how great things were going. <coughs> okay. It doesn't show anything on mine yet. I have too many mouses and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, just taking a look here a second. So 
See what happens when you get all um, when you get all proud and stuff like that. <laughs> Hi, Sandy. <coughs> I just said how well things were going. I'm not going to say that anymore. But what I am going to say is that um, if we start having a bunch of trouble with this, then I'm if I disappear. I will say to you now that uh, I apologize, and I'm so glad you You never know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 